Okay, hopefully everyone has seen my uh, bio there. Uh, I am retired as well, and I do a lot of history presentations for various groups such as yours. And today we're going to be talking about what's called notable Kentucky architecture. So of course the question is, what do we term notable Kentucky architecture? So it's always in the eye of the beholder. Everyone has a different opinion about what they like and what they dislike about architecture, as I have found in my career. Uh, these are the buildings I have found of interest. They may not be of your interest, but uh, there are hundreds or thousands of notable Kentucky architecture buildings out there, and this is only a very small sampling of those. And your favorite building may not be in this presentation, but after the talk, if you have a particular building you want to mention, I can do that at the very end. And I hope that this uh, presentation will inspire people to get out and about and explore all the great uh, scenery that we have here in Kentucky. It's a beautiful state, not only from a landscape perspective, but architecturally as well, as you shall soon see. So let's talk about early Kentucky architecture. Most people think of early Kentucky architecture like this, a log cabin. This uh, is a replica of the log cabin that Abraham Lincoln supposedly was born in back in, he was born in 1809 uh, near Hodgenville, Kentucky. But most people not from Kentucky think of Kentucky architecture as the log cabins. And of course uh, his uh, birthplace uh, location is enshrined here at this building near Hodgenville, Kentucky. However, uh, early Kentucky architecture was mainly forts, uh, log forts, uh, things like that. Turn this off before it gets weird. And uh, so, the, the building, the uh, these are both replicas as well of forts. When uh, the early pioneers came into Kentucky, they uh, had to be protected from the Native Americans that were already here, and so they built these forts. The one up above is uh, near Maysville, Kentucky, which is in northeast Kentucky, and of course Fort Herod there in central Kentucky, and these again are a replica of those forts. These are original log cabins here. This I think is up in Odom County, if, if uh, my mind serves me correct, or is where these photos came from. But you can see the uh, type of log construction that they had in those early days. They built a, a mill. Uh, spring houses as well, like this one. This is down near London, Kentucky. And then uh, a lot of these log cabins are still around, but we don't know where they're at because they will have put siding over them. Like if some of you may recall John E.'s restaurant, it was also called Bill Boland's restaurant there at Heights Lane and Bardstown Road, where the original building was a log cabin. The Hikes house was a log cabin. No one knew it until they started demolishing it back in 2013. And when they did, we ran out there and looked, and oh my gosh, it was a log cabin. Who knew that? I have no idea when it was originally built, but uh, yeah. So log cabins still exist uh, in Kentucky and around the area. Kentucky has some beautiful courthouses. We love our courthouses. There was a nice book that was put out a few years ago called Kentucky Courthouses. It was uh, helped, written by one of my good friends, Bill Scott. He's an architectural historian in Lexington. But we have these beautiful courthouses. The upper right-hand courthouse is in Bardstown, Kentucky. Here are some more nice decorative um, courthouses. Uh, the McDonald Brothers, who is listed there on the right, they were based in Louisville, and they did courthouses around the state and the region as well. Uh, you can see there they listed some in Indiana, uh, Illinois even. I think they even went as far over to Savannah, Georgia, I think. So they were very well known for designing courthouses, and they were based here in Louisville. Here is uh, the Bullock County Courthouse. It was designed by Mason Murray. He was also a Louisville architect. So we have some beautiful courthouses still existing in the area. Our state capitol buildings are great landmarks. 
the old state capitol. Hopefully everyone's been to some of these buildings, but the old state capitol built in 1929 by Gideon Shryock. There it is there. And you can see a little description of it. Again, uh, designed by Gideon Shryock. The previous uh, state capitals were uh, made of wood and they burned by fire. And so the third state capitol was made out of masonry or stone. Here are some internal photographs of some of the uh, chambers there inside the old state capitol. One interesting feature of this was there at the base of some of these desks, they had spittoons for the uh, representatives and senators to, uh, who were chewing tobacco, I'm sure, back in the day. Can you imagine what that floor looked like after a session? What's the most amazing feature of the old state capitol is the staircase within it. Now, I'm not certain how Gideon Shryock figured this out, but the staircase, some of you may be aware of this, that the uh, steps, none of, it's not mechanically connected. They are held in place by gravity, if you will, how they put those steps in. And how they built it is beyond me, and why they did what they did, not certain, but it's a beautiful staircase, very structurally innovative staircase. And, Whenever I go to uh, Frankfurt, I always enjoy looking at this and how they built it. A book uh, was done recently on Gideon Shryock by good friends uh, Winfrey Blackburn and Scott Gill. Some other uh, buildings that Gideon Shryock did there at Transylvania University, they did Morrison Hall. Did several buildings here in the Louisville area, the old medical school there in the upper left hand corner. Uh, Brown Memorial Church, and then, of course, the old Jefferson County Courthouse, where all Gideon Shryock projects. He also did, uh, well, he was involved with this building. It was originally known as the Bank of Louisville, and they had this um, uh, plaque out front of it, Bank of Louisville. It says, designed and built by Gideon Shryock. There's his name. However, it was not designed by Gideon Shryock. It was designed by an architect by the name of James Dakin. But it's a beautiful building if you've been inside it, beautiful rotunda. But it's now called Actors Theater. And so here is Actors Theater, designed by James Dakin, built in 1837. James Dakin also did a similar bank building in New York City designed in 1835. Can you tell the uh, relationship between the two? Very similar. What was going on is James Dakin, after he left New York City, he took a steamboat down the Ohio River. He was going down to New Orleans uh, to relocate down in Louisiana. And on his trip south, he stopped in Louisville. Somehow he found out they needed a bank building. He did one in New York City and got the commission to do the Bank of Louisville. And then he proceeded back down the Ohio River to the Mississippi on to New Orleans, where he then did a lot of great buildings as well in Louisiana. But um, as they were building this bank of Louisville, they hired Gideon Shryock to supervise the construction. So that's how it got confused between Dakin and Shryock as to who was the designer. And James Dakin actually did this. He's a well-known architect down in Louisiana. In the, he did a lot of beautiful buildings there. Uh, of course, we have a beautiful state capitol building. Hopefully everyone's been to the state capitol. It's a beautiful building on the interior. I always enjoy this photograph on the right side of all the workmen there who uh, were doing the construction. Hopefully they had uh, harnesses holding on to them. It's amazing, isn't it, <laughs> that they would do that up in that rotunda. Uh, it was designed by uh, Frank Andrews, as listed here. He did a lot of, he was based, I believe, out of Ohio, out of Dayton, Ohio, uh, is where he was uh, basically working from. Did a lot of buildings throughout the United States. Very prolific architect. It's a beautiful building. I'm always amazed when I go there. Uh, Andrews was also involved with the Silbach Hotel, 
Uh, William Dodd, a local architect, a Louisville architect, also assisted on the Silbach. And um, uh, Andrews designed what was known as the Marion, uh, Paul Jones Marion Taylor building down on 4th Street, 4th and I think it's Jefferson, between Liberty and Jefferson on 4th Street, the Marion Taylor building. So going back to Frankfurt to see some buildings, uh, we have a beautiful downtown uh, Frankfurt. And Frankfurt, in a way, is very similar to a lot of other um, city, small cities in Kentucky, like Danville, um, uh, Dawson Springs. Uh, many uh, uh, smaller Kentucky communities are very similar to Frankfurt with its churches and retail and, and all. The Grand Theater is still used as a theater there in Frankfurt. Kentucky uh, Arsenal building, pretty striking. It's up on the hill overlooking the city of Frankfurt. And the only Frank Lloyd Wright designed building in Kentucky is in Frankfurt. A lot of people think other buildings in Kentucky were designed by the famous architect Frank Lloyd Wright. But the Ziegler House is the only one documented to be a Frank Lloyd Wright house. In fact, Frank Lloyd Wright didn't even think he designed it. He came here in 1948 for a convention in Louisville, and people mentioned to him that, hey, there's a FLW house in Frankfurt. He said, oh, no, I didn't do anything here. Well, believe it or not, he went over to Frankfurt, looked at it, and said, yes, this is my building. He actually designed it on a ship going over to Europe, back in, what, 1910, and forgot all about it. And then when he came here in 1948, he did confirm that he did design this. But uh, it's only a Frank Lloyd Wright house in the state of Kentucky. Some other houses, notable houses. This one I love, it's called the Whitley House. Um, it's just off I-75 south of Richmond, uh, Kentucky. Beautiful um, masonry work here. It was built in 1785, if you can believe that. Look at that detailing and uh, how it was built. Beautiful. Near Stanford, Kentucky it is. Um, of course, the, uh, my old Kentucky home in Bardstown, built in 1795, very early on. So that would be, what, uh, 230 years ago that this was built? And you think of the craftsmanship back in those days. Here's another one called Whitehall for Cassius Marcellus Clay in Richmond. Beautiful house. And if, if the name sounds familiar, yes, so Muhammad Ali was originally named Cassius Clay after this Cassius Clay. This is a fascinating building. Um, it's called the Pope Villa. It's in Lexington, Kentucky. It was designed by a, a, a U.S. Senator who was from Lexington. His name was John Pope. And uh, it was built in 1811. And the architect Benjamin Henry Latrobe uh, designed it. And Latrobe was a very famous architect nationally. Uh, he, he designed the U.S. Capitol building. So why was Latrobe designing a building in Lexington, Kentucky, if he was so famous? Turns out what it was is John Pope, who was a U.S. Senator, while, uh, Pope was the, while um, Latrobe was designing the U.S. Capitol, Pope went up to him and said, hey, can you design me a house in Lexington? And so he sketched it up, gave him the plans. Pope came back to Lexington and had it built. So, Latrobe never came to Lexington to supervise the construction, but we have this connection of this Pope House to the U.S. Capitol here in Lexington. Very famous house. And it was in very poor condition. They almost considered demolishing it, but fortunately, better heads have prevailed on this and they have saved it. Another great house uh, in Kentucky is Farmington, which is based here in Louisville. And uh, the actual designer was Paul Skidmore, but for a long time people thought Thomas Jefferson had designed it. So now what they say is it was influenced by Thomas Jefferson uh, as far as the design of Farmington is concerned. So why do they say it's influenced by Thomas Jefferson? Well, here's why. 
here are three Jeffersonian houses. Uh, there's another Farmington in Charlottesville, Virginia, that had an addition on it by Thomas Jefferson, and it was for the uncle of Lucy Speed, who lived in our Farmington, so there was a family connection there. And then the lower two houses, Bell Grove and Edgemont, are attributed to Thomas Jefferson. Nowadays, there are no drawings from Thomas Jefferson which, author which document that he did these homes, but there are letters and other circumstantial evidence which uh, indicate Jefferson was involved in these designs. But then, when you compare these three houses in Virginia to our Kentucky Farmington, you can pretty much see the uh, influence of Thomas Jefferson. And Thomas Jefferson loved octagonal rooms, of which these buildings had, our Farmington has two octagonal rooms. So even though Skidmore is given credit for Farmington, we think Thomas Jefferson had some involvement or influence in it. So now that we go to a more modern home, if you want to call this a house, it's called the Kentucky Castle in Versailles, uh, Versailles. How do we say Versailles in Kentucky? Versailles. Yes. Or Versailles in Kentucky. Versailles, correct. <laughs> and so this is a fascinating building. This is an aerial photograph of it. I'm not sure if y'all have been to it. I've actually been to this uh, castle. It's awesome. There it is. I think it's now a bed and breakfast or an Airbnb, something like that. You can stay there, yes. Wow. Yeah, it's beautiful in the interior. Mm -hmm. I was there at their holiday party a few years back. And it was, yeah, something else on the inside. Speaking of uh, unusual houses, here's one. This is called the Miller House. That's also in Lexington, Kentucky, designed by architect Jose Ubere. I have his name pronounced properly. He was a disciple of Le Corbusier, who was a very famous architect uh, over in Europe, in France and Switzerland area. And so Jose Ubre designed this Corbusier-style home in Lexington. There are some uh, more images of it. Very unusual, would you not say? Very artistic and abstract. When you're traveling the back roads of Kentucky, you see a lot of fascinating architecture. Here are some distinctive houses. I'm always, whenever I'm driving through the rural back roads of Kentucky, I notice all of these interesting designs of these homes. A lot of these homes were built on what's called pattern books. Back in the 1800s, they wouldn't have architects living out in the rural areas, so the farmers, and people that lived in the rural areas, they would buy what's called pattern books that would have floor plans and designs, elevations of homes, and they would go to their local builder and say, hey, I like that house, can you build that for me? And so whenever you see a very nicely designed home out in the rural area, more than likely it was built off a pattern book. These are fascinating homes, and also you see a lot of nice homes that are in poor condition, deteriorating, like you would see here in Harrodsburg or Springfield. Um, hopefully some days someone will have enough money if they win the Powerball to uh, fix up these homes. It will take a lot of money to do fix up either of these homes. And again, whenever you're driving around, this is Bloomfield, Kentucky, very representative of a lot of small towns in Kentucky in the architecture with the uh, type of uh, churches and retail storefronts. You also see a lot of old motels and yes. gas stations as you drive around in rural Kentucky. And yes. this is perhaps the most famous. Mm -hmm. uh, Colonel Sanders, before he went into the chicken business, he owned a motel and a gas station, gas station. down near London, Kentucky, or Corbin, Kentucky area. Of course, the Wigwam, the infamous Wigwam Hotel down off uh, Dixie Highway. It's just down near Cave City, Kentucky, just off I-65. It's like a ten, five minute, ten minute drive off I-65. And they're currently uh, renovating uh, the Wigwam Hotel right now. They're taking it back to its orig original appearance. 
This was before they built all the interstates. When they built the interstate system, it took all the customers away from these little roadside motels and gas stations. And that's why Colonel Sanders went into his fried chicken business, because he lost all of his customers when they built I-75. We have a lot of covered bridges in central, primarily central Kentucky. Fleming County has a number of covered bridges. And unfortunately, we lose a lot of these covered bridges due to fire. This one, um, I think an arson, arsonist burned this one down in 2021. It was built in 1871 in Washington County. Very sad to see these historic old bridges destroyed in this manner. It also has some beautiful churches. This is in Springfield, Kentucky, designed by William Keeley, and I will mention Keeley a little bit later in the program, but uh, we have some just beautiful uh, churches in Kentucky. Our rest area designs, <laughs> if you're traveling along the interstates, uh, you, they, they're now building these new modern uh, rest areas that you see in the upper part of the screen here. Our old rest areas look like these round concrete structures that you see in the lower left hand corner. What's fascinating, the ones in Tennessee, if you go to Tennessee, they build those like their historic architecture, like log cabins. They look like, even though it's made of um, masonry, it looks like logs, the way Tennessee has designed their um, rest areas. Again, as visitors go through, it's kind of a marketing aspect of why you should visit our state. But anyway, so we have new rest area designs. Now, our best rest area, I think, is in Paducah, Kentucky, just off I-24. And uh, it, they took a historic house and turned it into a rest area. So as you're driving along I-24 here, the rest area is right here. You have to get off the exit ramps here and navigate over to the, uh, the historic home. But it's really cool. I've been there several times. And you know, it's, even if you don't have to use the facilities at this rest area, it's worth the stop. Uh, someone even wrote a book on it. It is a very beautiful building. Barns. If you go out in rural Kentucky, you're going to see barns. And uh, we have some beautiful barns. Unfortunately, nowadays, most of the barns are deteriorating. We used to have a very active tobacco market here in Kentucky where a lot of these barns were used to dry tobacco in. We no longer do that. And so a lot of these bar barns are becoming very deteriorating and falling down because no one's using them anymore. But uh, still see a lot of these as you drive the back roads of Kentucky. Distilleries. We have a lot, a lot of bourbon in Kentucky, as a lot of people are aware of that. This one is the Wild Turkey Visitor Center, and it's built like a bar uh, there. It's beautiful. It's in uh, Lawrenceburg, Kentucky. It's designed by the local architecture firm of DeLeon and Primer. But uh, it's a beautiful facility on the interior. There's some interior photographs of it. It looks like a barn. And uh, DeLeon and Primer did a very nice job. It won a uh, design award as well. My, one of my favorite distilleries is Ford Roses Distillery there, also in Lawrenceburg, designed by Joseph and Joseph Architects. And it has a Spanish Baroque style architecture to it. Very. Uh, very historic, very cool. I'm not sure if you all know why it's called Four Roses Distillery or not. It has four lower goals. Um, the person who started Four Roses, he wanted to, he had proposed to his fiance for marriage, and he told her that if she accepted to provide a rose outside her door, I think, or something along those lines, provide one rose outside her door for marriage to, to say that uh, she accepts his proposal, she left four roses out front. And so that's why it's called Four Roses, to provide understanding of how that happened. So it's very romantic tale, whether or not how true that is, but uh, that's supposedly how Four Roses got its name. 
And again, if you've been on a distillery tour, I highly recommend it. It's these are very fun to go on and visit. We have rick houses now throughout the state, especially here in central Kentucky. Uh, rick houses seem to be popping up everywhere. What is a rick house? A rick house is for the storage of barrel uh, that have bourbon within them. Uh, bourbon has to be uh, aged for a minimum, I think, of three years. Pappy uh, Van Winkle goes, what, 21 years or so or more? That's why it's so expensive. Uh, but uh, you, expensive? Yeah, the yeah, age of uh, Pappy Van Winkle is aged much longer than other bourbons. Uh, and anyways, um, so you have these rick houses. And what's so cool about this new Heaven Hill uh, rick house that they built a few years ago is it has glass on part of the facade, and you can see the barrels inside of this rick house. But most of the time as you're driving by them, you don't even know they're rick, they're just huge warehouses. But we have rick houses. Boy, you go in the Bardstown area and there's rick houses everywhere. State park lodges. We have beautiful state parks, not only for the, uh, the landscape, but also for the lodges. This is Barron Rivers uh, Park Lodge. We like going there. But we really like Lake Barkley. Have you all been to Lake Barkley State Lodge? Lovely. In fact, me and my wife are going there in a few weeks for their, they do these eagle tours. Uh, hundreds of eagles. Last time we were there a few years ago, we saw 60 eagles at, at the Lake, uh, Kentucky Lake and uh, Lake Barkley. And, but anyways, we always stay here at the Barkley uh, State Resort. It's beautiful. It was designed by Edward uh, Durrell Stone, who is a famous national architect. And you can see it has this heavy timber style of construction. We always like sitting in the dining room looking out and see if we can see eagles flying across. Some miscellaneous buildings in Kentucky. So I just mentioned Edward Durrell Stone did that Lake Barkley uh, Lodge. He also did several other buildings in Kentucky. He did the uh, Paducah City Hall, which is there in the top part of the image. He also did um, a state office building in Frankfurt, which has since been demolished. Uh, this building here, they've since demolished that, but it was based on a building that Stone did in Chicago called, uh, by Standard Oil. So Edward Darrell Stone, very famous national architect, and uh, he did several buildings here in Kentucky. The Bernheim Forest uh, Visitor Center, very beautiful. It was designed by William McDonough, who is known as the green architect in the United States. He designed sustainable buildings throughout the, uh, the country. And uh, I always like, me and my wife are members at Bernheim and love going to the Visitor Center here. There it is. Beautiful building. Uh, I don't get this. I've been in this building one time, the uh, Basilica up in Covington, Kentucky. Magnificent. Very similar to Notre Dame uh, Cathedral in Paris, France. Uh, spectacular cathedral there in Covington. Another uh, religious style building is this chapel that was built down uh, in Columbia, Kentucky for Lindsey Wilson College. It was designed by an architect by the name of E. Faye Jones. And E. Faye Jones did uh, a famous building in the lower right hand corner there. That's Thorn Crown Chapel in Arkansas, Fayetteville, Arkansas. And me and my wife actually were there a few years ago. Beautiful chapel building. You walk inside that and uh, oh, it's just uh, all inspiring. Beautiful structure. But Faye Jones also did this dome style chapel uh, in Columbia, Kentucky. Uh, this is an office building in Ashland, Kentucky. Uh, it was built for uh, the Kentucky Power Company, electrical company there in Ashland, Kentucky. It's now known as Park Place. But uh, anyways, it has a famous pedigree architecturally as well. It was designed by Roach Dinkaloo Architects, and you probably have no idea who Roach Dinkaloo are, but they were the partners with an architect by the name of Errol Saramin. 
Errol Saarinen, very famous architect. He designed the St. Louis Arch, Dulles Airport, TWA Terminal, um, numerous office buildings around the country. Uh, he even proposed doing a building here in Louisville for Reynolds Aluminum Company, but unfortunately due to various obstacles was not constructed. So the only connection to Errol Saarinen we have here in Kentucky is this building uh, in Ashland, Kentucky, by his former partners, uh, Roach and Dinkler. Errol Saarinen tragically died at a very young age. I want to say he was around 50 years old or so when he died. Uh, and uh, Roach Dinkler, his partners, continued on with the firm doing projects. So even though this building is uh, it's, it's an okay type design, but um, again, connected to Errol Saarinen. Another building, uh, this is um, Norton Center for the Arts in Danville, Kentucky, designed by William Wesley Peters of Taliesin Associates. Taliesin was the successor firm to Frank Lloyd Wright. So this is a connection to Frank Lloyd Wright. I mentioned that his, of his house there, the Ziegler House in Frankfort, Kentucky, but uh, his successor firm was uh, Taliesin, and it was headed up by William Wesley Peters. Um, Tally Essett and William Wesley Peters also did other buildings in the area. Uh, they did Thorpe Interiors off Chenoweth Lane, mm -hmm. as well as, it's now called the Wright Tower, but it used to be called Caden Tower, but its original name was Lincoln Income Life Tower, so it's had three different names, this lacy style building here. And then Thorpe uh, Interiors there in the upper part. Unfortunately, for Thorpe Interiors, uh, the new owner of that building painted it white. It had this beautiful sort of golden style brick to it, and for whatever reason, the new owner didn't like that gold style brick and painted it white. Not sure why you would do that, but they did. So, uh, And of course, Caden Tower, which I still call it Caden Tower, but it was built from the top down. It had these huge trusses up at the very top and had cables that suspended the floors so they built it from the top down instead of the ground up. You could literally walk underneath uh, the building there. And some of you may recall that during the uh, Christmas season, it once looked like this. They, had to, they put the wreath and the uh, Christmas tree on it. That's when it was Lincoln Income Life, they would do that. Everyone misses that. It was a great tradition that they used to do it. In Owensboro, they have this new dramatic convention center. Very dramatic. I've been to this several times. It's designed by an architectural firm out of New Orleans. There it is there. Here in uh, Louisville, um, we have the U.S. Marine Hospital. This building also has a very interesting architectural pedigree. Uh, Robert Mills, who's there as his photograph, he was a noted architect in Washington, D.C. He designed the Washington Monument in Washington, D.C., as well as several other federal buildings. I think he did the Treasury Department building also in, uh, in D.C. But uh, this is the only, he designed, what, about seven or eight of these marine hospitals around the area. This was the only inland marine hospital. But what a marine hospital was, as the uh, seamen were going through on, on the various barges and ships up and down the Ohio and Mississippi rivers, they would have illnesses and sicknesses and all, and they would be treated at these hospitals that were located directly adjacent to the waterway and rivers of the uh, United States. And the only reason why this one is the only remaining marine hospital still standing is a new hospital was built just to the south of this one here. And they used the mechanical system, the boilers and piping and all that. They used this building's mechanical system for the new building. So they were connected infrastructurally and mechanically so they couldn't tear this one down. And so it still stands. Thank goodness. So Robert Mills, very famous architect, and is, we're fortunate to still have that building standing. Also want to highlight the Cathedral of the Assumption here in Louisville. 
And it was also designed by William Keeley. I mentioned William Keeley earlier uh, in re relationship to uh, the church in Springfield, Kentucky, uh, St. Rose. But uh, Keeley also did this one in Louisville, the cathedral. And the Keeley brothers, uh, Patrick Keeley and William Keeley, designed over 800 Catholic churches in the United States. So they are very famous Catholic architects. And, and uh, so we're fortunate to have their cathedral here in Louisville. Last but not least, I want to discuss Shaker Town. That's a neat place. That is sort of like the architectural capital of, of Kentucky. We were talking about Columbus, Indiana earlier, but you, everyone's got to go see Shaker Town. Mm -hmm. And here we go. It's near Harrodsburg, Kentucky. And uh, why were they called Shakers? Well, during their religious services, they would go into some sort of a trance and start shaking. And they would sh vibrate and shake all around in doing their religious <laughs> dance, if you will, <laughs> what, what they would do. And so, uh, and one reason why the Shakers are not here anymore is because, as you can see how it's separated, they, they separated the men and women. And so they died out because they didn't have kids. And, uh, you know. One fascinating thing about the Shaker design is, so uh, when they would have their services here, they would have a clear span on the first floor so that as they're dancing about, uh, they don't have any columns or things that obstruct them. And above the ceiling was this in intricate um, truss system that held up the ceiling here. So the ceiling actually is su supported, suspended from the truss system above and gave them a clear span so that as they're shaking about, they don't injure themselves. So uh, it's kind of a fascinating uh, design that they had up for their buildings there. And of course they hung things, if you've ever been there, they have those uh, coat racks all around the walls where they hang their, their chairs and whatever. They, they cleared out the floor so that they would not get harmed by that. Just some beautiful architecture there. It really is something to behold and I highly recommend if you've not uh, been there. It's kind of too far away for a field trip. I want to say it's about an hour and a half good drive, maybe longer from Louisville. There's one of their homes. And again, the men would go in one side, the women on the other side. And there we go. So hopefully you all found that of interest of all the notable architecture. Let me get this. 